Monday from NBA.com and the Hangtime Podcast, a legend over at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Mr. Sekou Smith. Sekou, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you? Oh, it's great to have you on the show. We also have Patrick Ruby here from ESPN.com. We're going to ask you some NBA. How's that sound? Sure, sounds great, man. All right, look, let, let's just start it off right off the bat because this is the show where sports and politics collide. You're at NBA.com. I assume you have your ear to the offices and you could hear what's going on. There is a rumor that as part of this collective bargaining agreement, the owners are going to be looking at the equivalent of the, the, the franchise tag like they have in the NFL to really bind players with their existing team to put a break on the whole LeBron, Chris Bosh, let's create our own super team, Miami Heat type scenario. Do you think that's something the owners could conceivably get at the bargaining table? I do not, but I, I certainly think that what went on with the decision last summer, Dave, and and now this thing with Carmelo, and you saw Mikhail Prokhorov the other day, mm-hmm. uh, you know, basically saying enough's enough in Russian. <laughs> or or, or mix the in English and yeah. in Ringlish or whatever you want to call it. I mean, they're they're not happy with the way these things have worked out. The, my problem with it, and and a lot of other people's issue with it is, nobody makes these owners hand out the contracts that they end up hating in the fifth or sixth year of them. Mm-hmm. And you know, there are only a handful of of these kind of stars, these guys like LeBron and Carmelo and Dwayne Wade, and you know that you that you want to be a part of that franchise, quote-unquote, franchise tag. Like, Phoenix had no interest in franchising Amari Stoudemire last year, Mm -hmm. and it worked out great for Amari. So this idea that you would do it, same as in the NFL, when you do the franchise tag, you end up penalizing some player who's really not a franchise player anyway. But because the rule's there, you have to use it. I I just think there are a lot of different things that if you're the NBA owners, you can look around at what the NFL's doing, what the NHL's doing, and ignore it. Man, you got to do – things that cater to your league and your your players specifically. Stop trying to do what somebody else is doing and assuming it works for your league. Mm. Now, Sports Illustrated just did a poll of every single NBA player, and it came out that 77% of players do not think there will be a lockout. 19% do. Which number shocks you more? Uh, certainly the, the, the 77%. Those are the guys who, who apparently didn't listen to their – their union rep and save some some game checks, man. You can't <laughs> you can't assume that that this thing is just magically going to work itself out. This isn't some fairy tale. This this is serious business. And if you if you think about the economic situation that that the entire world has been dealing with the last few years, these 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 NBA players don't live in that world, and that's one of the problems. They live in a totally different existence uh, than than a lot of normal regular people like ourselves. So they're not feeling the crunch the way the average guy is. There, there's definitely going to be a problem if the sides are as far apart as they they seem to be right now. And if 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 they're not saving game checks, they they're going to get whatever they deserve uh, if there is a lockout. Mm. I got Patrick here's got a question for you. I just want to jump in with sort of a bigger picture thing. But how much does the example of what the NHL owners did in their last labor dispute? either sort of inspiring or emboldening NBA owners? Because it seems like they're trying to basically go down the same road. And actually, even in the NFL, I feel like it's the same thing. Do you have any yeah, I, I, don't know that, I don't know that they're looking at, at what the NHL did as some kind of blueprint because that league is not even on the same you know plane as these other two in terms sure. of what kind of you know money you're talking about. And the other thing you have to remember is the agents in the NBA – are guys who are so plugged into how this process works on both sides of it. You know mm-hmm. I mean? They, they totally understand the thinking and, you know, the motives that the owners have in this thing. And so it's not like these players are sitting around kind of clueless as to what, what the process might be. We've been here before uh, as recently as what, you know, 98, 99, uh, you know, the, the NBA had, we've been through this process of the months, in days leading up to a potential lockout, the lockout, what it meant, and, and kind of where you go from there. The, the problem is the players are the only ones who really haven't experienced this. There, there are lots of reporters and observers of the league who remember that previous work stoppage very clearly, and there are tons of executives uh, and agents who lived through that previous one. But you got a league full of guys who, are, you know, half the league is now what twenty six and under. Mm-hmm. So, so those guys were in junior high the last time there was a 
a work stop. That's where your 77% comes from, a guys who don't believe there's going to be a lockout. 